Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to do a subscriber request video. And the request has actually been given to me multiple times by multiple people. I've just sort of kept it in my back pocket, if you will, for the right time. And I think this is the right time. And the video today is going to be masculine fragrances that are targeted towards men that I think smell amazing on a woman. I did a very similar video, but in reverse. Earlier in my channel's existence, I did a video that was basically about feminine targeted fragrances that as a man, I love to wear. Now, early disclaimer, uh, as, as I've grown in my fragrance journey, I completely stopped caring about gender uh, in perfume. So whenever something is marketed towards men or marketed towards women, it, it really, for me, has I, I see it as a marketing ploy. Um, to quote the great Roja Dove, uh, he says that a flower does not have a penis or a vagina. Can't say it any better than that, right? And so, um, and he's right. There is some truth to that. You know, a uh, flower smell smells like a flower. Uh, benzoin smells like benzoin or whatever it is. Patchouli smells like patchouli, right? And it's all sort of blended together. And what's interesting is there are ingredients that have sort of switched gender roles as time went on. Way, way back in the day, not just a hundred years ago, but hundreds of years ago, lavender was feminine. Now lavender is known as a masculine note. And so one thing I will say about this list is there are some similarities that continue to pop up. So these are all masculine targeted releases that you're gonna find in this list today, okay? So every single fragrance in this list, according to Parfumo, is marketed towards men. Um, and so, you know, some of uh, my guess is as you're seeing this list, you would think that, you know, as we get to some of these older designers or whatever it is, some of these designers from back in the day would probably be considered unisex nowadays, but I'm going to take advantage of that and use that to my advantage when I'm making this video. So all of these are marketed towards men. That being said, you're going to see some overriding trends. Number one is you're going to see a lot of fragrances that are either floral heavy or maybe they're vanillic heavy and sweet because I think vanilla and sweet fragrances go very well on a woman and I think floral fragrances work very well on a woman but you might be surprised because again that note of lavender does pop up there are some lavender fragrances in here that I think smell amazing on a woman and so um, again this is just my opinion so this is supposed to be a fun video um, I'm not trying to offend anyone or tell you what you can or cannot wear um, you know, this video is really just my opinion on masculine fragrances that I think uh, would work great on a woman, but you wear whatever you want. If as a woman you want to wear polo green, I say knock yourself out. You want to wear Koros, you want to wear Antaeus, you want to wear Bellamy, wear all of those. There's absolutely nothing stopping you from, from doing so, but those aren't the type of fragrances that I would think um, would smell great on a woman. I would much prefer to smell something like this on the ones we're going to talk about today on a woman. So uh, that's what this video is going to be about. These are just fragrances from my collection that are marketed towards men that I think would work great on a woman. And if you are a woman watching this, it, it might be a great way for you to try to expand your horizon because, you know, and I was like this early on in my journey too. If it was marketed towards women, I wouldn't even give it a chance. And so worst case scenario, even if you don't get to smell any of these uh, fragrances. I hope if you watch this video, it at least tears that wall down. If you're out sniffing fragrances and you see a fragrance that's marketed towards men, try it. Don't just pass over it just because it's marketed towards men. Um, nowadays, though, there's more and more stuff that's more stuff is unisex. They just put everything unisex now. I think it makes it easier on on everyone. Um, and all fragrances are unisex, anyways, in my opinion. But um, these fragrances are specifically marketed towards men that we're going to talk about today. So let's get started with Scent of the Day. Uh, scent of the Day is actually a feminine targeted scent. That's what got this uh, idea churning in my head to do this video because uh, I did, like I said, uh, feminine targeted fragrances that I love to wear as a man video uh, maybe like six or eight months ago. And so I've been holding on to this video idea for a long time, but I wore this today and I absolutely loved it. It is Lipstick Rose. This is such a fun, this is a fun rose fragrance. It's a um, playful fragrance is the way I would describe it because as a guy wearing this, it smells like, <laughs> it smells like the lips, the lips, a lipstick 
lips of every hot girl you've ever wanted to kiss, you know, in like high school, college, and you just never got a chance to, let's say, because uh, you were too shy or whatever it was, right? That's that's sort of what this smells like. This has this um, this has this alluring, playful, um, you know, slightly sexualized innuendo, but still classy. You know, this is still a very classy fragrance. I mean, it's a Frederick Mall, and this is what the original Frederick Mall fragrances looked like. This is what the original packaging looked like. I thought this was a fake the very first time I thought I saw it. Thanks to my good friend Armando for um, pointing this out, and and I'll tell you what, uh, this really took me by surprise. I think that this is my favorite Ralph Schwieger creation. Uh, it is uh, just, it's just perfectly, it's, you know, he has this very specific style and this creation plays to that style brilliantly. It's uh, again, marketed towards women, but I love it. One of my favorite, very quickly turning into one of my favorite rose fragrances. You know, it's got that powdery cosmetic feel to it, but there's also something very creamy and the rose, it, it's like a violet rose, you know. It's like a deep purple rose. It's beautiful. So, absolutely beautiful. So, that's my scent of the day. Lipstick rose. Okay, let's get started on masculine fragrances targeted towards men that I think smell great on a woman. I'm going to have to condense that title somehow for the YouTube, um, for the YouTube uh, title uh, naming. But uh, let's get started. The first, and, and these are basically in no order. I'm not ranking these. This is just an unranked list. I basically did them in alphabetical order for the most part. It's not perfect though, I'm sure. I'm sure some one is out one is out of place or something, but just say no order. Just randomized, okay? So the first one is a little bit of a cheat for me. And if you watch my channel, you know that this is an easy one to put on this list because <clears throat> I'm just going to grab a rag. If I can wipe this off and make it nice and shiny for you because this fragrance was supposed to be Dior's Poison. It almost won the brief for Dior's Poison and uh, ended up losing and became Alain Delon Akitos. So Akitos is a masculine scent created by Gerard Anthony that almost won a brief for a feminine scent. See, that's what I'm talking about, this gender bending in perfumery. But um, Akitos is uh, uh, just absolutely fantastic. One of the best Gerard Anthony's it's uh, musky, spicy, leathery, cardamom. There's this freshness of sort of ginger and orange when you first spray, but you get a big dose of huge floral heart. There's rose and um, jasmine, beautiful jasmine note in here with some patchouli, sandalwood, um, and this animalic leathery dry down. So you're going to get like civet and castorium and these animalic notes in the base. And, it's, and it comes across as very musky. And there's something, if you've ever smelled... Uh, poison. Somehow the way that the muskiness and the florals play together, both of those fragrances, Akitos and Poison, sort of play, they tug at the same string, if that makes sense. But uh, if you're, if you're, uh, I know some of these are going to be hard to find, some of them are discontinued, some of them will be very easy to find, because they're just all these scattershot fragrances in my collection, but Akitos is, um, it is hard to find, but uh, if you're going to pay 200 bucks or something like that for a bottle of Akitos, you could spend your 200 bucks at a at a Macy's on something way worse. So um, if you find it for a good deal, it's definitely something to um, to keep an eye out for. Okay, next on the list is an Amouage. It's actually the very first Amouage from 1983. It is Amouage Gold Man. So Amouage Gold Man is a creation by Guy Robert. And I'm going to do a perfumer's portfolio video on Guy Robert very soon. But this is... Classic fine French perfumery. Yes, it's in a Middle Eastern bottle, but don't think of Ajmal or don't think of, um, you know, uh, any of the Latafa or other Middle Eastern houses. This is nothing like that. This is fine French perfumery in a Middle Eastern packaging. And what they basically did is they gave, they brought in Guy Robert for a purpose. They wanted, you know, the, the Sultan of Oman, he wanted fine French perfumery. Um, he didn't want, you know, he wanted to have remnants of, you know, Oman. So they went and, and used the best ingredients inside of this bottle that, uh, that Oman had. So it was the finest dog rose, the finest frankincense, the finest myrrh. But this is still, um, French style perfumery, if that makes sense. Some people compare this to Chanel number no. five. I don't think it's comparable to Chanel number no. five. I think it's much more comparable to Arpege. Uh, by L'Envent. And if you've ever smelled Arpege, 
That style, that DNA, Guy Robert was in love with. He tried to make it over and over again with, um, uh, he made a fragrance for Hermes called, uh, what's it called? It's called, I can never remember the name. It's called Kalesh. So if you've ever smelled Kalesh, there's, I think there's more similarities between uh, Arpege, Kalesh, than there is Chanel Number no. 5. But there is a little bit of this aldehydic, you know, style. But they've really amped up the civet in the base. It's extremely powdery and opulent and large and grand. This is a huge fragrance. This is like a ballroom fragrance. You know, black tie, ballroom. You want to make a entrance. You want to be the center of the attention. You're the guy or you're the gal in this case. Um, gold man. Gold man and gold women are very close. I actually prefer gold man, I think, because I, th I feel like the civet is maybe a little bit more amped up. I like the animalics a little bit more. But that's a fantastic, absolutely fantastic fragrance. Try the man's version. I actually have the women's version. If you're a woman out there and you never smelled the men's version, give it a shot. Okay, another one that I think uh, a woman should try is it's a floral leathery fragrance with a big note of orris, like this dirty orris, dirty iris basically. And it's Imitation Man. So Imitation Man was done by, oh, I forget the perfumer, but... Um, um, I think this is the best thing she ever did. This is, uh, so good. This is, so, my, my good friend Eugene last year put out a fragrance that I think was fragrance of the year called La Douleur Exquise, and instantly it reminded me of Imitation Man from 2018, and it was, um, so Eugene's fragrance was with him, and, um, Antoine Lee worked on creating that fragrance. And Eugene's fragrance goes much more into that old school 80s castorium that you'll smell in Antaeus. Whereas here you do get castorium in the base, but it smells a little a little different, a little more, um, I don't want to say niche, but it doesn't have that vintage Antaeus dried out. It, the castorium still smells extremely high quality. But the reason I think this would work just amazing on a woman is that there is this unbelievable, again, rose violet combination so the floral heart in here mixed with this sort of powdery iris and the powdery iris smells so posh and it's slightly dirty there's a little bit almost of a, like a vinyl note because the story behind this fragrance is this supposed to be christopher chong's representation of christopher chong's childhood of growing up in new york city and of course in the 1970s you have to think vinyl right vinyl records and stuff like that Oh, it's just, it's so good. This is absolutely, um, this is absolutely niche quality. I know I hate, some people hate saying, hearing that niche quality, but, uh, it's true. This is, this is deserved of an amouage. It's, uh, it's really good. And I think it would smell amazing on a woman. So that is Imitation Man. And then probably the most obvious one on the list outside of the first one, Alain de Uh, there's a couple other, I think, fairly obvious, let's say, um, masculine fragrances that would work great on a woman, but this is like the king, the easiest choice for me to pick, and it was Lyric Man. And Lyric Man is so easy to pick because uh, Lyric Man sort of plays this gender-bending role, even within its own, um, there was a Lyric Man and a Lyric Woman that came out, and Lyric Woman, I think, smells a little bit more traditionally masculine, and Lyric Man smells a little bit more traditionally feminine, because Lyric Man is this very fresh rose fragrance with, um, ginger and saffron and angelica and galbanum and orange blossom. So it's rose and orange blossom. There is some pine, there's some sandalwood and frankincense and vanilla and musk. Um, but because it's like this fresh, spicy rose fragrance, I think, and, and the lime is actually really prominent in, in, in this, uh, release. You're going to get a lot of lime. You're going to get a, a ton of rose, so much rose, uh, in fact, that the very first time I got like a mini of this, I gave it to my mother. So I was like, there's no way a man can wear this. Like, absolutely, you know, no way. This is not for me at all. And then I ended up coming back to it and, of course, buying a bottle. Um, but this would smell amazing on a woman. This would smell like, uh, you know, she has all the confidence in the world. Wear something like this, that's, that is, this is a pretty loud offering, too. At least the older bottles. I don't know what the new, what the newer ones. I've never smelled one of the non-magnetic caps, uh, but I can tell you that um, this is a made in Oman bottle, and uh, the new ones that say the writing down here on the front, I've never smelled. But if you're a woman and you're a rose lover, 
check out Lyric Man by Amwage. And then finally, I'm going to close with one that no one talks about anymore. I could have put Reflection Man in here. Well, I'm close the Amwage line anyway out. Um, I could have put Reflection Man in here, but I decided to leave that out because I'm going to put a designer that I think smells very similar to Reflection Man. So I decided to include this. This is an Amwage that gets no love. I think it's still available for purchase. Not this one. This particular one is discontinued. This is Amwage Silver Crystal Man. This is the bottle that I have. This is the vintage Amwage bottles. That's what they look like. Beautiful. That was the, um, what did they call that? Dagger. There was a specific type of dagger. Conjar dagger. Uh, but that's what the cap is actually based on. The handle of a dagger. And um, so this one got came out in 1998 and then it got discontinued almost instantly, I believe. And then in 1999, they came out with Amwage silver which was marketed towards men as well and um silver is supposed to be you know sort of the easier to wear let's say younger uh brother of amouage gold because it still has that uh oriental amouage dna with flowers and frankincense and and woods and all that stuff uh but it's toned down a little bit it doesn't have that huge opulent this is still a big fragrance but it's not as big as Amouage Gold. It's supposed to be a little easier to wear. But the rose and Ylang Ylang in the opening of Silver, Silver Crystal Man or just Silver, um, the opening of rose and Ylang Ylang with spices and jasmine. So it's rose, Ylang Ylang, and jasmine. That's the three-headed floral monster in, in Silver. Uh, and it is stunning. I mean, this is... I think that this is like... Um, you know, opulent princess stuff. If you're like a princess of a Middle Eastern country, I could totally see you smelling like this. So that's uh, Amouage Silver. I think uh, if you're a woman, you should definitely check that one out. And then, one that is unfortunately discontinued according to Parfumo. This is Animal Animal for men. This used to be a cheapie, and I bet you you can still find bottles of this floating around. No one's hyping up Animal Animal, I promise you that. But this is the for men version. Um, and be careful, because this is Animal Animal for men. There's also an animal for men, just to confuse you, and um, that's a completely different fragrance. But this came out a couple years after Angel, but a couple years before Amen. And I left Thierry Mugler's Amen, the original, off the list because I included this instead. This is sort of a sweet gourmand fragrance, but it's in that Amen style. It's almost like Amen before Amen came out, right? And so it's got... Honey, patchouli, the patchouli is very prominent. Uh, jasmine, amber, vanilla, sandalwood, lily of the valley, musk, nutmeg, rose, ylang ylang, cedar, galbanum, lavender, lemon, lime, pineapple, and tobacco. And even though it has all those gourmand sweet notes, um, I, I love this fragrance. It's, it's uh, I'm, I'm really sad that this is discontinued because you used to be able to buy a 100 ml bottle for 20 bucks retail, you know, brand new. Um, and uh, now that it's discontinued, I don't know what the pricing is, but if you are if you like that gourmand sort of DNA, there are very few gourmands that I like. Amen is one that I really do like. This is one to check out. Animal for men. <coughs> I might need a cough drop. Uno momento. Ricola to the rescue. I got my lion shirt today. I'm a ram that's feeling like a lion, a sick lion, but a lion. Okay, so next on the list is going to be another gimme. So there's a handful of gimmies on this list, I will say that. And this is another one of them. We've gone through three gimmies so far, I think. Um, Akitos, Lyric Man, and now this one. This is JHL. And the reason that this is a uh, gimme uh, is that Estee Lauder... Uh, her husband was uh, Joseph Henry Lauder, hence the JHL. <laughs> and Joseph Henry Lauder really loved fragrances like opium, for example. And he also really loved fragrances like cinnabar, which I do not own a bottle of, but I want a vintage bottle of cinnabar. That's high on my wish list. <laughs> Sorry about that. I told you I was not going to, I was going to try not to do that, but. Um, the cough drop, man, what can I say? So, um, he wanted a fragrance like that. He loved those type of fragrances. The problem was, is this was the 70s, you know, when, when he was really into that, early 80s. 
and he didn't want to wear a woman's fragrance. Men did not wear women's fragrances back then, right? So um, Estee Lauder put their heads together and they and they got with Josephine Catapano, who made one of the most, um, I would say, underrated women's perfumes of all time called Youth Dew. Check out Youth Dew if you've never smelled it. And some people say, oh, it smells like grandma. Grandma smelled amazing, if that's the case, because Youth Dew is fantastic juice. I love it. And... Um, they, they uh, got with Bar Bernard Schott, <coughs> who Bernard Schott made most of the Aramis line up until this point. I think all of the Aramis line up until this point. Aramis, Aramis, Aramis 900, Devon, so forth and so on. And they came up with this, JHL. And JHL is a orange heavy, so there's like this line of orange that runs right down the center of the fragrance. So when you smell it, you're going to get spices, you're going to get cloves, you're going to get this oriental touch, you know, the labdanum, the vanilla, the uh, the heaviness of those resins and spices. Oh, oh, it's, it's so good. And um, you're going to get rose and cinnamon, and it's got that heavy oriental spicy touch to it, right? And they said, okay, we're going to give you this. It smells very similar to Youth Dew, Cinnabar, o Opium, YSL, Opium, whatever you want to call it. <coughs> Whichever one you think this smells closest to, I think this probably smells a little closer to Youth Dew because it's Josephine Catapano and she made Youth Dew than Opium, um, which is uh, Jean-Louis Suizac, I believe, a completely different perfumer. So when you have the same perfumer making something, there's going to be more similarities, let's say. But uh, either way, that DNA, and they said, okay, we're going to market it towards men. They put his initials on it and he loved it. Unfortunately, he only got to wear it for a year or two and then he died. Um... But this is, so that's why this is a gimme, is while this is a masculine fragrance, it's sort of the blueprint that they used to create this fragrance were, were popular feminine fragrances at the time. Okay, next on the list is another Gerard Anthony fragrance. We already had one with Iquitos. Now we have another, and this is Cristobal by Porom, by Balenciaga. <laughs> so Cristobal is this woody, sweet sort of coffee scent. And it's coffee and tea. There's actually two. It's coffee and tea. So it's a very relaxing uh, fragrance. There's a, there's, a, there's a little bit of mugwort in the opening, which is a type of Artemisia, I believe. And um, mugwort adds a little bit of this old school greenness to it. But don't let that worry you. This is uh, a very modern, this is probably the most designer smelling Gerard Anthony. It's discontinued and it's hard to find. Um, and it's getting very expensive, but there's this vanillic, benzoin, ambery like dry down that I think would smell stunning on a woman. So that's Cristobal Por Homme. Again, some of these are going to be hard to find. Uh, I didn't tell you these would all be just e as easy as going down to your local TJ Maxx, but some of these are going to be simple to find. Some of these you're going to have to do some work on, but uh, I think this will be a a good list to save in your back in, in in your back pocket one of these days if you're a woman looking for some new scents to try, let's say. Okay, next on the list is the first of many from Anique Minardo. And you know how I said earlier there's some themes that keep coming up in this video. One is the vanillic theme, one is the oriental theme, you know, that sweet theme is another one. But Another um, theme that is going to emerge is certain perfumers just make fragrances that I think have this uh, certain touch to them, which would smell amazing on a woman. And Anique Minardo is one of those perfumers. She is very well known for her tonky, benzoiny, sort of, you know, sweet, resinous, powdery thing. And you would think I would hate something like that, but I don't. I actually love her work. I think she's a... I mean... I've been calling her the great Anique Minardo for as long as I've had a channel. And this is uh, Jaipur um, by Boucheron. This is the Eau de Parfum. And I specifically chose the Eau de Parfum, even though I much prefer the Eau de Toilette now. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, because this puts a little bit more focus on the um, heliotrope and the vanilla. And the, the Tonka Benzoiny warm thing. The Eau de Toilette puts a little more focus, especially the first hour or two on the citruses and stuff like that. 
and I think it's a little bit more masculine. But this is one of the greatest cheapies of all time. Just look at the bottle. Look at the, look at the, it's supposed to look like an Indian, almost like a temple, right? Almost like a building in Jaipur. Um, beautiful bottle. Stunning. This is like a $25 fragrance. <laughs> Man, COVID. Can't wait to be done with it. But if you know Anique Minardo's work, or if you like that sort of vanillic, powdery, sweet, oriental, you know, style thing, um, definitely give Jaipur Om. Don't worry about the Om. Don't worry about the Om. Just give Jaipur Om a try. It is fantastic. Okay. Next on the list is another gimme. Another easy one, if you will, because this smells very similar to the women's version, but this is Calvin Klein's Obsession for Men. One of the greatest musky oriental designer fragrances ever created. This was uh, created by Bob Slattery, and um, <clears throat> I think he also did the women's version. But, um, <coughs> sorry to cough in your ear. Lavender, cinnamon, clove, myrrh, nutmeg, pine, rosewood, sage, red berries, amber, and really the focus is on that musky vanilla for me in the dry down. <coughs> musky vanilla, patchouli, sandalwood, and vetiver. Fantastic spicy oriental. It does smell very similar to, to be fair, it smells very similar to the women's version, but give the men's version a try if you're a woman and you've never smelled. Obsession for men. It is, I, I am in, especially these vintage bottles with the built-in sprayer. Oh my God. The ones that say cologne spray, even better. Um, well, I think if it's a built-in sprayer and it's a men's bottle, it will say cologne spray. Yeah, they changed it to a cap, I think, once once it turned into the eau de toilette. So if you can find these older cologne spray bottles, oh my God, it is on another level. Um, on another level. Okay, so here might be the first real big surprise. I mean, there may have been some surprises already for some folks, but I think this is the first real big surprise. This is Caron's Pour Un Om. Now, Pour Un Om, um, Pour Un Om is um, the one of the earliest masculines, let's say. One of the earlier masculines. Guerlain had... Um, Mouchois de Monsieur from 1904, I believe. So Guerlain did have a masculine scent, but they sort of kept that under the counter. I don't think that was really heavily advertised. <laughs> Man, this cough drop is like messing me up. The um, um, this this was this was heavily advertised as a masculine scent, and most people think lavender is purple because they see the fields of flowers, and it's not. Lavender is green. And so when you see this this color juice right here, this is a very lavender heavy scent. And the thing about this scent is, it's got this um, sweet spicy bit to it. But really, it's a it's a lavender lavender and lavender absolute with vanilla, amber, and musk. That's the note listing. And for me, this is one of the greatest lavender scents of all time. Some people don't like it. I will say this, that this is so um, influential that even a few years ago, Celine, which is not a brand that I like, and some people are really offended at that, by the way. You don't like that. I don't like Celine. Well, too bad for you. I, I hate Celine. <laughs> I think they're a shite house, personally. But um, I'm going to do some more Celine reviews, so there will be some more bashings to come because I've got some more uh, decants, some more samples. Um, <clears throat> but Celine recently did a fragrance that they sell for like 300 bucks, a niche, a niche fragrance that, uh, smells very, very similar to this. Um, now to be fair, the new bottles of this, which I have a new bottle, um, I hate, I despise it. I think it smells awful. It smells plasticky and cheap and, uh, they claim we haven't changed the formula since 1934. Well, maybe they changed it and changed it back or something. I don't know what they did. But um, this bottle, this is an 80s bottle, I think. This is much different smelling to me. There's a little bit of animalics in here. Uh, everything is so smooth. It's almost like if you've ever smelled MDCI's Invasion Barbar. It's so smooth. It's like, um, 
you know, the way that the, the, the lavender in there and the violet leaf all sort of come together, extremely smooth. And that's how it is here. <coughs> oh, man. We're going to have a water break, boys and girls. Oh, I may need a, um, <clears throat> I may need a pit stop. <laughs> okay, come on, Ramsey. All right, so next on the list, we have maybe some big surprise number two. And big surprise number two is Ego East. <laughs> now, here's the thing about Ego East. It was a huge commercial flop. Like, huge. I think Chanel spent something like $50 million on advertisements. And, uh... <coughs> they, um... They had to, uh... They basically had to try to pivot and make flankers and other things of this, you know, to try to make some of their money back. Because Ego East was just not selling. It just was not as popular as Chanel had hoped. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Luckily for us... They didn't discontinue it because as frag heads looking back, Ego East is like, uh, you know, for me, it's, uh, I think it's a fantastic, one of the best designers money can buy. And um, it's woody, it's spicy. And you might look at this and say, why would a woody, spicy, you know, tobacco, sandalwood, mahogany, rosewood, cinnamon, carnation fragrance be on a list that would smell good on women? And I'll tell you what, there is a similarity to this. If you've ever smelled Coco by uh, Chanel, <laughs> which is a women's targeted fragrance, and this is a beautiful women's targeted fragrance too, by the way, there's some similarities here. You know, that that oriental style that Jacques Polge created, there's some similarities here. They turn the dials and they turn the knobs this way on this one and they turned them this way on this one but <clears throat> if you like one you'll probably like the other so if you're a woman and you really like cocoa i would i would urge you to try ego east okay next on the list <coughs> even the cough drop isn't doing it we will not admit defeat we will go slow, but we will not admit defeat. <laughs> okay. Next on the list is going to be a discontinued, but I don't think this is extremely hard to find. <clears throat> it's actually created by Charles of the Ritz, and this is called Carrington. Now, Carrington is a uh, very interesting fragrance because Carrington... Um, was a is a is a fragrance that um was originally created to pay homage to a t to a television show <clears throat> and that television show was extremely popular in the 80s it was called Dynasty <laughs> and there were a couple actors in that show John Forsyth and Linda Evans who were wealthy beyond everyone's mean, anyone's definition of wealthy, right? And um, they played characters Christy, sorry, Crystal and Blake Carrington in the show. And the show was so popular that it actually ended up launching a men's and a women's fragrance, right? The women's fragrance was called Forever Crystal. <laughs> and the men's fragrance was called Carrington. And the reason that this is here is that even though this isn't, technically it's an amber fougere. That's the way I would describe it. It's got lavender in the top. It's got anise, which those are two very masculine notes to begin with, and basil, right? Those three notes, you would think, man, there's no way a woman should be wearing this. But outside of the top, oh, it's such a great, this is so underrated. Um, I love this stuff. Outside of the top where you get the lavender, the anise, the uh, Amalfi lemon, the bergamot, and the basil, those that opening, the rest of the fragrance is just a feminine fragrance dream almost. There's ylang-ylang, and there's a big dose of it. There's a big dose of flowers in here. 
But there's an even bigger dose of a couple ingredients that I think this would smell amazing on a woman. Heliotrope, which gives it this very um, spongy aspect. If you've ever smelled quality heliotrope, you know that it adds this uh, layer to the fragrance. And it almost feels like Play-Doh, right? It's like this ambery Play-Doh. <laughs> Mixed with amber and a ton of vanilla. There's a ton of vanilla in the base and there's a huge floral heart. There's also a lot of tonka bean which um, can add this, you know, hay-like texture, if you will. And um, patchouli makes it heavy as well, but the geranium, the jasmine, the carnation, and the alangi lang, man. I do love this. For, I love amber fougeres, though. That's the thing. I'm a sucker for them. You, if anyone knows me, it's one of my favorite types of fragrance, so there's no doubt I, I love that, but I think that is like a secret weapon for a woman. Who, who knows? I got that bottle for $25, by the way. Shout-outs to... Uh, Keelan from, from Sense of South Jersey. Okay. Next on the list is a Creed. And it's actually the first of two times this DNA is going to show up on this list. This is Original Santal. And this is a Pierre Bourdon creation. He also made the original from 89, which we'll talk about soon. But um, Original Santal, this is my second bottle, by the way. So I, uh, I've i worn the shit out of Original Santal. But um, it's ginger. There is some lavender in here. Um, but really this is, uh, a focus on what Creed claims as my source sandalwood, uh, in 2005 and benzoin, siam, vanilla, ambergris, cedar, musk. Okay. And there's probably some heliotrope in here too, even though there isn't any listed, <clears throat> there's some pink pepper and rosemary and stuff like that. Um, but this is a very creamy, it, it smells very similar to Mont Blanc Individual or, um, Yop Ohm, which is coming up very soon. Okay, next on the list is going to be a Dior fragrance, and it is none other than Dior Ohm. This is another gimme, I think, on the list, because this is a brilliant, this fragrance was inspired by a fragrance that came one year before this, and the fragrance that came one year before it was called uh, Bois d'Argent by Dior, and that was an Anique Minardo as well, by the way. A little fun fact for you. So, Bois d'Argent, um, Bois d'Argent sort of set the stage for Heidi Slimane as creative director of Dior to put out a fragrance that historically would be probably a feminine fragrance for men. <laughs> and the key note in Dior Homme is iris. Uh, and so there's a little bit of lavender in here to try to keep it slightly masculine. And actually what's interesting is if you... No Olivier Polge work, because this is not a Francois de Marchi originally. This is Olivier Polge and um, the, the 2005 Silver Stem version, right? And Olivier Polge loves using a little bit of lavender in the top of his creations. And he did some amazing designers that <clears throat> really get overlooked. His work before Chanel was primo. So think of things like Midnight in Paris or even F Black Ferragamo. Totally overlooked. Um, there's some bits and pieces of, uh, of F black in, in here, by the way, he did Dolce & Gabbana, the one, um, which, you know, I mean, is it the greatest thing in the world? No, but you have to give him credit. I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a huge hit fragrance for Dolce & Gabbana. Um, and so I just bring those up to say, um, there's a, there's a little bit of that DNA. If you've smelled some of his other works, you'll, you'll get an idea. And there's this brilliant chocolatey cacao in here as well. Just a little bit. But you have to remember, it was competing against things like L'Instant de Guerlain, which is also sort of a um, chocolatey cacao patchouli. Um, and there's a little bit of leather and vetiver and uh, patchouli in the base here. But on a woman, Dior Homme, I think it would smell amazing. That powdery iris... Oh, and the silver stem version, one of my favorite iris fragrances. I don't care. I don't care if the iris is high quality or, you know, I know there are people that love Latessa and stuff and they're like, well, Dior Homme doesn't use the right quality iris. I don't care. I love that stuff. I am in love with the silver stem Dior Homme. <clears throat> okay. Next on the list is another Anique Minardo. I mean, her style just fits this video perfectly. And this is Potion. I think my throat finally got the uh, message of who's in charge. Okay, so D-squared Potion is uh, an Anique Minardo creation. 
that uses that ambery. Some say the smell is synthetic. And while it does, it absolutely does, there is there is this designer feel to it. There's these beautiful herbal little touches in the top. So you get little bits of thyme and angelica and mint and um and then they're mixed with these brilliant florals, rose and gentian and uh, cinnamon. And then you blend it in with that smooth cash, cashmere, cashmeran, basically. Cashmere wood is what's listed, but it's cashmeran. Um, and it just gives it this slightly, you know, gourmandish feel, even though it's not a true gourmand. Oh, it's so fantastic. This would smell great. This would smell amazing on a woman. Um... So yes, D squared potion discontinued. This is the eau de toilette. <laughs> this is the eau de toilette, but uh, there's also an eau de parfum that's quite nice as well. Okay, next on the list is an Escada. Casual Friday. And I mentioned there's going to be some lavender scents on here. So there's, there's a little bit of sweetness to this. This is a Dominique Ropion creation. So it's anise, lavender, tarragon, coriander. But the reason this is on this list is because the dry down. There's cinnamon, there's fruit, so it's slightly playful. It's like a grown-up Lamal. Lamal's on the list too, coming up soon. But with some tonka bean and amber and vanilla. And you, you get sort of the DNA of what I went for, which I, I think would smell amazing on a woman. So Casual Friday. Again, discontinued, hard to find. But, um, you know, if you if you spot a bottle at a decent price, that's definitely one to, to keep an eye out on. Okay, so this one is a little tricky because um, it's also discontinued. And But if you go to Parfumo and type it in, it says it came out in 1987. It didn't. It actually came out in 1997, which makes a lot more sense. This is Francesco Smalto's Smalto. For men. And um, Small Toe, I don't know who made Small Toe. Um, I can tell you it's sort of a spicy resinous. There's some lavender and artemisia in here. Again, um, when I smelled this the first time, I was like, this came out in 87. Like, it almost didn't make sense, you know? Um, but as soon as I found out it was 1997, it made perfect sense because it's really more on that relaxing chamomile, vanilla, tonka bean, you know, there's that resinous, there, you're going to get some woods though. This may be a little bit too woody, but if you're a woman who likes woody fragrances, like if you like Femini to Dubois or something like that, not that this smells like that, but I would give this a try. This may be sort of a sleeper for a woman looking for something that's a little outside of the norm of what most women targeted scents smell like nowadays. Okay, now we're going to talk about a masculine floral, which I think would smell great on a woman. This is Ensense by Givenchy. Ensense is um, a fragrance that I don't think it's as good as the hype makes it out to be. It's sort of this fresh green fruity floral is kind of what it is. Marketed towards men. And they put a fur balsam note in there. I think trying to keep it somewhat still masculine and, and woody. Um, and they put a note of mastic. And mastic, I think, smells like the name sounds mastic you know like there's this um like like it's a gum like ingredient is what i think what i think mastic smells like and um but there's a beautiful lily of the valley magnolia and iris note in here and very rarely do you find a well done magnolia note in designer perfume you just i mean don't you have to go to things like bortnikoff to get a good magnolia note nowadays but ensemble did a good job of that um I just don't think this fragrance is worth more than 50 bucks. You know, if you can find this 50 mil for 50 bucks, go for it. Do not pay three or 400 bucks for this. It, it is absolutely not worth it. But there's this freshness to the floral side of this fragrance as well. If you're a woman and you can find that at a good deal, that's definitely one to keep an eye on. Another one, which I don't think this one will come as much of a surprise because this is a little bit more well known in the industry. It's an Alberto Mordias. It's Givenchy's Pie. Givenchy's Pie, uh, and Givenchy's Pie is benzoin, ironwood, pine needle, and mandarin orange. Those are the notes, but it's basically this uh, sweet-smelling oriental style fragrance is basically, uh, what it, is basically what it is. Ironwood is supposedly a very strong wood. Huh? Go figure. But um, 
yeah, if you're a fan of those benzoin, heavy, sweet sort of gourmand fragrances, um, check this one out. This is quite nice. <laughs> Would smell amazing on a woman. Okay, next on the list is a Guerlain, and this is Guerlain's L'Homme Ideal Eau de Parfum, the Eau de Parfum. Now, this is one of the best almond, one of the best almond fragrances in my collection. It is almonds with vanilla, spices, rose. There's a slight touch of this suede leatheriness in the dry down with this, this Guerlainade, right? So the Guerlainade usually has like, you know, tonka beans, sandalwood, and, um, you know, maybe some, some other florals in there, which are not listed outside of the Bulgarian rose. Um, but, um, maybe a touch of frankincense too, but it doesn't come across as sm super smoky. It comes across more cherry. It's like, imagine like, uh, almondy spicy cherry like smell. That's, uh, just a bit to the left of the cough syrup vibe, enough to keep it interesting. It's very sweet, very modern. You know, this is known as a very uh, popular date night fragrance for younger guys, let's say, but I think this would smell amazing on a woman. So, L'Homme Ideal Eau de Parfum. Eau de Parfum, not the Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum. Okay, another discontinued fragrance, unfortunately, but this is Guerlain's Abbey Rouge Dress Code. And this is also somewhat sweet because there's a note of praline in here and i usually say praline should not you know go on a man that a, a man should not smell like a praline or a tiramisu or any of that stuff um and and i and i do think that uh, this would smell amazing on a woman but but i actually really like this fragrance this is a big win for me i think uh terry vosser made a hell of a flanker that just you know they they did a weird thing where every year they changed the bottle i think it just confused people and um, I think it lasted 15, 16, 17, this is a 17, so I think it lasted three years, 15, 16, 17, they discontinued it, um, but dress code is, maybe there was an 18 too, yeah, I think there was an 18, so maybe it lasted four years and then they discontinued it, but, um, either way, Abbey Rouge dress code, if you're into these sort of, uh, interesting, spicy, woody, sweet type of designer scents, Definitely one to check out. Okay, next on the list we have Vetiver by Guerlain. So this may come as a little bit of a surprise to some to some folks watching this video, but I will tell you this. Um, I think that this fragrance, while it's one of the greatest masculine fragrances of all time, I think that this, oh, I think that this would smell amazing on a woman. Because it's just so, it's got that, now vetiver is a uh, traditionally very masculine note. And um, you notice I didn't put any other vetivers on here. Not any other true, real vetivers. This is the only one. And the reason is, it's got that guerlainade. It's got that tonka in the base. That just sort of, um, you know, no one does vanilla and tonka like guerlain, right? And this is a this is a one of the best vetiver fragrances ever created. Probably is the best vetiver fragrance ever created. And uh, yet, I still think that this would smell amazing on a woman. Sort of the freshness of it, especially on a hot day. Oh, oh, good stuff. So here's a little bit of a sleeper. This is uh, Jacques Fat Pour L'Homme. Try to get the bottle that looks like mine. Don't get the one with the gunmetal cap and the uh, smaller sticker. But uh, this is discontinued as well, of course, sorry. But uh, it is a spicy, sweet sort of um, oriental scent. Olivier Guillotine created this. And as you can see, a lot of orientals, I think, would smell amazing on women. Um, this has that tonka, patchouli, frankincense dry down, but it also has some fruits. I think this is like a designer version of Roja's Saudi Arabia, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, because this has these... Um, this very complex sort of opening with mint and citruses and woods. And then it sort of goes into this floral heart with spices. But there's also this fruity raspberry, which smells like something, you know, Roja was doing in his Middle Eastern line. And then it goes into this frankincense, ambery, sort of tonka, patchouli, woody dry down. Very interesting. Spicy, sweet. You know, it's got this contrast going. Um, there is lavender in here. And so I think they tried to make it somewhat masculine doing that, but it's a pretty complex, pretty good designer. 
Maybe the best thing Jeremy Fragrance ever hyped. Maybe. Maybe the best thing Jeremy Fragrance ever hyped. I don't even, I don't even think he knew it at the time. But um, he hasn't hyped very many good stuff. And But this is one that um, Jeremy Fragrance did hype that was good. Okay. Next on the list, going back in time. So first we started with the one from 2005. Now we're going back to 1989. This is Yop Om. Yop Om was created by Michelle Almarac and Pierre Bourdon. Sweet Oriental. And this does have that pudgy heliotrope, you know, um, with orange blossom and cinnamon and jasmine, vanilla, tonka, sandalwood, patchouli. I do think this would smell just great on a woman. And with that pink juice too, that... You know, this was, uh, coloring the juice was also a big thing in the, uh, in the late 80s, early 90s. And then, going back to lavender, we've got Lamal. Well, Lamal's more about vanilla and not just lavender, but, um, I really don't like this fragrance. It's way too sweet for me. That's why I think it would smell great on a woman. Sweet oriental style fragrance from Francis Kirkjohn, um, Lamal was like the smell of the 90s for high school boys. You know, it's got that lavender spice, mint, cardamom, cinnamon, neroli thing with vanilla and tonka and amber that, you know, with a little bit of woods in the base too, uh, made Francis Kirkjohn's career. Absolutely made it. So, and then in 2007, Francis Kirkjohn did this for Lamal. And this is uh, Fleur du Mal. This is the reason I didn't put Reflection Man on the list. I could have put Reflection Man on the list. I think they um, came out very close to each other, maybe like a year or two apart. But I think this is like a designer version of uh, Amouage Reflection Man. This is Petit Grand Orange Blossom Neroli, and it definitely, you get those white florals in here. There's a big white floral with the orange blossom and neroli, but it's fresh, you know, and the dry down has this chamomile note. Imagine drinking like chamomile tea, and you're sitting at home with your feet up relaxing, right? But with the white floral, <coughs> excuse me, and um, Kumarin in the base. And it has a little bit of that synthetic feel, which you would come to really associate with Francis Kirkjohn's creations, especially with his own house and those white musks that he loves using. Uh, I mean, just look at the bottle. It just screams white musks. And um, Fleur du Mal is actually really good. Real, I'm glad to have it. Very glad to have it. Um, great for the summer, in my opinion. So that is Fleur du Mal. Uh, would smell amazing on a woman. <clears throat> okay, next on the list, we have a Lagerfeld. And actually, I probably could have added another Lagerfeld in here, but this video is long already. This is Lagerfeld Classic. So this fragrance, especially in the more modern classic form, I think would be perfect for a woman. Yes, it's just a beautiful spicy oriental with aldehydes, orris, you know, there's that uh, orangey, look at the color of the juice. It's got that sort of orange, just imagine like an orange line running straight down the middle of the fragrance, just like the way I described JHL, right? There's a little bit of, there's a little bit of uh, JHL in Lagerfeld, or actually it's the other way around, there's a little bit of Lagerfeld in JHL, because um, this came out first in 78, but uh, Ron Winograd, one of my favorite perfumers of all time created this. Oh, so good. And if you like that, um, if you like this style, uh, you'll, you'll have to check out KL Om as well. KL or KL Om. But, um, yeah, I didn't want to, didn't want to include that one because there's a lot of Orientals on here. Here's another one. This is Ombre Noir. And this is sort of a spicy, woody, resinous, smoky, fragrance that um, I think, even though it's marketed towards men, I think a woman could easily pull this off. There is a cognac note in here, um, but um, this one may be uh, a hard, harder to wear than some of the other ones on here, but because it doesn't have as much sweetness as some of my other choices, let's say, uh, but there is myrrh. And myrrh adds this unbelievable warmth to a fragrance. You know, it's almost like just being wrapped up in a blanket. Yeah, resinous myrrh. Uh, it also gives me a feeling of like thick syrup. You know, myrrh can sometimes feel very syrupy and thick. And um, that's a that's a really good fragrance, Ombre Noir. I think fragrancebuy.ca had some bottles of this at a very fair price. But uh, 
This is an online exclusive from Lalique. You can't buy this anywhere but Lalique.com, apparently. Okay, next on the list we have a Loewe fragrance. And this is Loewe 001 Man. So if you liked your Ohm, try this. This is like, uh, this is a 2016 release, the Eau de Parfum. It's like Loewe does Dior Homme, but with carrot seed instead of iris. Beautiful fragrance and a lovely ambrette dry down. Fantastic stuff. Powdery, just brilliant modern perfumery. Would smell great on a man, would smell great on a woman. Okay, back to Anique Minardo. I mean, you could just go Anique Minardo. You could just look up Anique Minardo's creations and just go right down the list. Um, this is Au Masculin by Lolita Lampica. Sweet, gourmand. Oh, I'll tell you what, um, uh, if you are, if you like that licorice like DNA, there's this beautiful anisic like, uh, licorice feel in here with some rum, um, violet, they say orgeat syrup, which I think is a licorice thing. Ivy, there's an ivy note in here with some labdanum. She loves using that labdanum, tonka, vanillic sort of base, and she did it here beautifully. Fantastic fragrance. O masculine, sad it's discontinued. Okay, to the house of Mosqu uh, Moschino next, and this is also almost a gimme, if you will. This is, uh, actually, wait, before we do Moschino, I'm gonna do, since we're, since I already have it down this way, <clears throat> let's let's do a Mal Malbasin. Fragrance. This is Mabasin Om. So Mabasin is a house that gets almost no talk because it's sort of a cheapy house. And um, however, this fragrance right here is a Alberto Morias creation. And uh, Mabasin Om is a sweet, spicy Oriental fragrance. Again, a lot. There's a lot of Oriental fragrances on this list. And this is lavender and bourbon vanilla. And um, if that sounds familiar to you, hint, hint, um, this came out in 2003, so this is eight years or so after Lamal is just uh, running its uh, rampaging all over malls in America. This adds rosemary, cinnamon, sage, patchouli, musk, and sandalwood. I think this would smell amazing on a woman. Um... Some may find it a little too masculine, but I, I think you, I think, give it a chance. Uh, Mabasin Om. Okay, next on the list we have Moschino's Womo. And it's not just Womo, but it's Womo. It doesn't even know if it's for a man or a woman. It's got a question mark in there. Um, but it is marketed towards men. But, I mean, think about that. They put in, this is 1997. They did a fragrance that was called Womo, marketed towards men with a question mark after it. Um... They're, they're not sure either, but uh, this is new Hedione, not old Hedione, new Hedione. <coughs> Rosewood, I love. Transparent coriander, it's not even there. Kumquat, Chinese golden orange is what that says. Cyclamen, cinnamon leaves, clary sage, cedarwood, artemisia, new amber wood, new amber wood. Maybe Rich would like that one. Uh, sunlight Accord and Musk. Got to get the Sunlight Accord in, you know. Um, but it's a very sort of fresh, um, Hedione, you know. Hedione has a little bit of this, how would you describe Hedione? Almost like this florally uh, white jasmine, almost like this jasmine-y feel to it. Um, and there's a little bit of this musky freshness it is. It does smell slightly woody, but I think a woman could could easily pull off uh, Womo. Womo. Um, and then, of course, the one that Moschino did that I think would smell great on a woman is this Toy Boy. In the crazy, but the bear, the bottle with the bear that looks like it's ready to stab you. Um, yeah, this is a floral, spicy uh, fragrance that really is a beautiful rose fragrance that would smell great on a woman. But uh, also, I think, smells amazing on men, too. But that is Moschino's Toy Boy marketed towards men. And then we go back to the 80s with Paco Rabanne's Tenere, one of my favorite spicy floral fragrances that gets almost no love. Uh, doesn't get the hype like other vintage fragrances, but I love this stuff. It is um, one of my favorite perfumers, Pierre Wargnay. 
Oh, you know what I love about this is he obviously highlighted the florals here, but he used the base that was used in, in Hugo Boss number one, which he did just three years earlier than this. Um, so in 1985, Hugo Boss number one came out. 1988, Tenere came out for Paco Rabanne. And so the highlight is on the carnation and the lily of the valley and the jasmine. And the florals here are really highlight, which was very popular in the late 80s. There's also a cass cassis note. and um, But it's this leathery... It's almost like this pissy, leathery, honeyed, animalic dry down. But man, a woman wearing this, I mean, especially if she was dressed to the nines wearing this, I mean, the sea would just part. Um, that is a power fragrance right there. Would love to smell that on a woman one day. Absolutely would love it. Okay, next on the list is a Palomo Picasso fragrance, and it is Minotaur. And this fragrance was actually in direct competition with an Anique Minardo fragrance, which was called Roma Womo from 1992. <laughs> this was also 1992, but this was Michelle Almarac, and they had the same idea. This sort of sweet, spicy, fruity, green, playful sort of tonk of vanilla, summery fragrance. I, I like this. I mean, uh, I think it's great for summer, um, but I think it would also smell amazing on a woman. And then we've got... A fragrance that Rich Mitch said was created by women for men of how they would imagine a man to smell. But I think it would also smell great on a woman. It is Prada Amber Porome. And Prada Amber Porome has this unbelievable fresh, clean soapiness about it. With the Neroli, uh, Prada just does amazing soapy, fresh fragrances. If you can find the um, <clears throat> older Made in Spain version, please do that. Don't buy the modern L'Oreal version. That made in France. Don't buy the modern stuff. Um, this is such a beautiful powdery, you know, just this cloud-like fragrance. I think this would smell amazing on a woman. And then, <clears throat> another one, a little bit of a gimme, if you will. This is uh, Richard James Saville Row. This is discontinued. <clears throat> um, but if you can find this, this is an amazing tuberose fragrance. A tuberose fragrance for men, a, spice, a spicy floral fragrance for men that I think would smell great on a woman. Yeah, they um, they added this beautiful suede-like dry down, which I, I really, that's my favorite part of this fragrance. But that tuberose, I mean, the tuberose is almost there from the beginning to the end of the fragrance. It just, there are different things that kind of go around it. <laughs> um, but if you're a tuberose lover, Saville Row is definitely one to check out. And then... And then, one of my favorite Tonka bean fragrances that no one talks about, and there is tobacco in here, but I don't care. I still think this would smell unbelievable on a woman. This is Robert Graham's Fortitude. I should have got the big bottle with the ram head on it, but uh, I'm happy with I'm happy with that. How could I not be? But the, the big boy, this is the 100 mil. Yeah, this is the 100 mil. The 250 mil had a ram's head that was like a, like a, like a bust on the top. And um, this is one of my favorite Tonka bean fragrances of all time. Seriously, of all time. Uh, this competes with Tonka Imperial. That's how good Fortitude is. It is unbelievable. It's Tonka, Tobacco Absolute, and Patchouli. Simple fragrance, expertly executed. You know, if you like, if you're a woman and you like things like Feb Delicios and stuff like that, check out Fortitude. I like Fortitude better than Feb Delicious. Okay, next on the list is uh, a 1999 release by Maurice Roussel. <clears throat> it is Rochas Man. And uh, Rochas Man, you can see it's very um, Conehead-like. Um, if anyone remembers the Coneheads. Uh, it's a very sweet gourmand. This is very close to Bond Number no. 9 New Harlem, which has this sort of pancake wintry, you know, um, gourmand, coffee, vanillic thing that, uh, you know, if, um, if you smell New Harlem, you'll pick, you'll pick this up. This came first, actually. And then New Harlem, uh, I think he used this as like a blueprint for New Harlem. But, uh, I'd, I'd love a vintage bottle of New Harlem. I just refuse to pay the money. But if you like that, uh, you know, that DNA, if you like that sweet sort of gourmand, you know, if a New York breakfast maple syrup and coffee sounds good to you, check out Rochas Man. 
Um, <clears throat> apparently, they also came out with a Rochas Man Intense. I've never smelled that. Okay. Next on the list is a Roja. And it's actually one that may surprise some people, but it is Enigma Porom. Or Creation E, because they couldn't use the name Enigma in the United States or something. So it's Creation E in the United States. Uh, Porom Parfum. Uh, but this... This is known as a cognac fragrance, and it is. It is a cognac fragrance. One of my favorite cognac fragrances, actually, but it's also it's also a huge benzoin vanilla heliotrope. Those three, that combination right there adds this, you know, um, adds this uh, pudgy, play-doh-y sweetness. Very similar setup to sort of others that I've talked about in the video, but this opens up smelling like Coca-Cola. And I love that Coca-Cola opening, man. And it just turns into this tobacco-y, cognac-y sort of dry down. But I think that the sweetness in here, the sweetness in here would just smell amazing on a woman. Especially um, like a, a boss girl, right? Like a woman who runs her own business. Let's say she has to have a meeting with everyone and everyone's already seated. And then she walks in and they're all waiting for her. Oh, God. This thing would... This would blow everyone away, especially on a cold day. Forget about it. That's what they'd say in New York. Forget about it. Okay, next on the list is a fragrance that I despise and I hate, and I actually want to sell it, um, but I'm too lazy to sell any of my fragrances. This is uh, Salvatore Ferragamo's Uomo, uh, the tiramisu fragrance, the sweet gourmand tiramisu fragrance. You know how I say no man should smell like tiramisu? Well, I do think this would smell great on a woman, but uh, I am I am against men smelling of tiramisu. Just a, just a personal preference of mine, but I do think that would smell great on a woman. Okay, next on the list is a Thierry Mugler fragrance, and I left out the original Amen because I included Animal, Animal instead. So I decided Pure Havan would smell great on a woman. This is also sort of a sweet gourmand. This sort of tobacco, you know, um, labdenum, styrax DNA with some cacao, with some chocolatiness. I think this would smell amazing. The sweet gourmand aspect. There's also another one that Thierry Mugler did called B-Men. And B-Men is discontinued, unfortunately. But B-Men was created by Christine Nagel before she became in-house perfumer at Hermes. Um, and this is sort of a woody, spicy fragrance, but it has this fruity, ambery sort of touch to it that I just think would smell great on a, on a, on a woman with some confidence. And then maybe another easy gimme. I've had some easy gimmies on the list, like the masculine tuberose fragrance, um, you know, Moschino's Tory Boy, uh, Lyric Man by Amouage, Akitos. This is another gimme. This is Tom Ford's Noir Extreme. So Noir Extreme is marketed towards men, uh, but there was a there was a, a women's version of this that you could buy as well. But I think that this would also smell great on a woman. Sweet gourmand with that uh, coffee note, that Indian dessert coffee. You know, just uh, I think this would be fantastic stuff. So this is Noir Extreme. Okay, next on the list we have. A Trusardi fragrance. And this is Trusardi's Python. This may be a little bit of a surprise for some. Python Uomo. Excuse me. Python's the women's version. This is Python Uomo. This is a very fresh, musky... Um, it is a little unique, but uh, some find it boring because there's olive in here. There's tree bark. There's mulch. There's cypress leaf. There's uh, teak wood and bourbon vetiver and tonka bean and musk. But it just really comes across as a, as a fresh green, musky, clean fragrance that I think this would smell on a hot day. I think this would smell great on a woman, personally. Uh, this is, again, Python Uomo. Okay, a couple more and we're done. Next on the list, we've got a Victor and Rolf, and this is Antidote. So here's the thing. Antidote um, is discontinued, but it has everything. This is, if you're a woman who is really into perfume, like really into it, and when I and when I recommend some of these like designers, you laugh, like Salvatore Ferragamo Womo, you're like, hell no, it's not for me. I want something more complex. Get this. Get Antidote. 
Antidote is an amazingly complex designer. It is the antidote to boring fragrances. That was the slogan. And uh, Pierre Wargnai, again, one of my favorite perfumers, made this. Um, oh, shit. The only problem with my bottle is the cap busted. But it still sprays, so I don't really care. But um, I'll tell you what. This is amazingly complex. It has everything. It's got spices, got freshness, got lavender, it's got uh, florals, there's orange blossom, violet, freesia, geranium, uh, there's that vanillic tonkin thing I've talked about all video, there's also iris, there's woods, there's gaiac wood, there's moss, there is musk, there's amber, there's leather, I mean, and you get different things in different weathers, it's extremely complex, uh, the only problem this fragrance has is it doesn't have huge lasting power, so it's like a six hour fragrance, so what, reapply, five hours, reapply. Uh, and, and you will love this stuff. So that is uh, Antidote. And then, speaking to the, <coughs> excuse me, speaking to the, um, <clears throat> the crowd who likes the crowd pleasing, you know, slightly sweet oriental gourmand fragrances, this is Spice Bomb Extreme. And the most popular Spice Bomb fragrance, and yes, you can pull the pin and throw the grenade. It is a little bit tacky, but uh, I really do like this fragrance. I think this is a good designer. It's got that uh, cinnamon, labdanum -y, you know, oriental vanilla, peppery tobacco thing. I think it would smell great on a woman. And then we've got a discontinued fragrance. This is Yoji Om. So Yoji Om, here's the thing. You've got to go with the 1999 version. Um... If you go with any other version of this, you will be disappointed. You have to go with the 1999 version. It's a very Japanese style fragrance. Uh, Jean Patou owned the house of Yoji when they were working on this fragrance. And there's rumors that um, that Jean Carlio had some input on the fragrance. But really, uh, Jean-Michel Duriaz is the perfumer of record. And um, it's lavender, anise, coriander, bergamot. There's that uh, licorice-like note in here with um, carnation, geranium, rosewood, cinnamon, cedar, coffee, rum, leather, sandalwood, tonka bean. And it just has that, you know, um, gourmand, coffee, you know, rum feel. But it's not heavy. That's the reason I think this would be great on a woman is it has this, uh, it wears like a Japanese fragrance. The Japanese do not like very heavy fragrances, right? And so um, I think that would be fantastic on a woman. And finally, the final two masculine fragrances in my collection that I think would be amazing on a woman, Body Koros and Opium Pour Om. So the women's opium is one of my favorite feminine targeted fragrances of all time. And we're going to end on opium for men. Uh, but Body Koros is an Anique Monardo again. So it has that benzoiny you know, sweet uh, thing that she does so well. And it was originally, um, it was originally in a bottle that came like this. I don't know what the new bottle's like that looks like the Koros bottle with the built-in sprayer, but um, I'm very happy with this particular bottle. Um, it does have a eucalyptus note and some frankincense and Chinese cedar and mace. So for a designer, it's still pretty, pretty different. And then this is a, is a Jacques, Cavalier creation, and it's got star anise in the opening with black currant. Uh, again, a little bit of this licorice <clears throat> like vibe with pepper, bourbon vanilla, tolu balsam, and atlas cedar. Um, and I think it's that bourbon vanilla dry down. This oriental style, I think, just works on a woman. So, uh, opium pour om. And I really think that this can be worn in more seasons than just. Uh, just winter. I think that could be an all year round scent. So that is my video, masculine fragrances targeted towards men in my collection, which I think would smell amazing on a woman. Thank you for watching. Let me know what your, um, what, which ones you'd be most interested in smelling. Um, you know, do leave a comment below. I love seeing your faces. I love responding to the comments. Once my nose is healed from the COVID. Uh, we'll get back to doing individual reviews, which I love doing. I know there are people who absolutely love these lists, and I know there are people who absolutely love the individual reviews. But thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.